congrats on your new 237 purchase. Uh, during these coronavirus times, we're going to do walkthroughs of all the features and functionalities of your boat uh, to limit customer to uh, employee interaction. Um, starting at the back of the boat, we have our drain plug fastened to the right rear lifting eye. This drain plug is double threaded and has an O-ring on it, so do not over tighten it. Moving over to the side, our Yamaha 150s. As you can see, everything's covered in plastic and you can't really do a whole lot, but your dipstick is right here. Pull it out, wipe it off, stick it back in. It should be between the bottom and top dot. As long as it's in that range, you're absolutely fine. This range may vary depending on engine temperature, uh, whether you just ran the engine, whether you're checking it cold. It's gonna fluctuate a little bit. There's nothing to be concerned of there. On the back side of the engine here, we have our spark plugs. They are a 200 hour service item or every two years, whichever comes first. On the inside, we have our oil filter. It's conveniently located upside down. So that when you take it off, it makes a giant mess. On the front top of the engine, this is gonna be difficult to see, is your oil fill. Your oil quantities are written right next to the oil fill for your oil changes. We recommend sucking oil out through the dipstick, but if you wanted to drain the oil, you could using this hose and the hex nut located inside of there. Coming down onto our lower unit, we have our fill and oil level screws. Remove the bottom screw, put your, hook your pump up there, remove the top screw and pump until oil comes out the top. This is a sealed unit and is a every year or 100 hour maintenance item. On the front of the gear case, right here, that little tiny hole is how your speedometer works. If your speedo stops working for whatever reason, typically there's a bit of sand, muck, mud, something of that nature stuck in there preventing it from working. Take an eighth inch drill bit, you can clean it out and it should work again. Move it around to the middle. Drain plug is located in the center there. We have anodes on the back and underneath the motor bracket. Those should be replaced as needed. In addition to this, we have R1 trim tab anodes here that are also replaced as needed. On the side of your engine, we have our flush port. This is how you flush your engine out after a day of use. And unscrew that. Inside of there, there's a little yellow washer. The little yellow washer is prone to falling out. It is just a garden hose washer you can get from your local hardware store. I recommend keeping a pack on the boat. It's what allows this to seal. If it does not seal properly, the engine can overheat. Also back here on the side of the engine, we have our mechanics trim right here, as well as trims up on the dash. On the side of the console, side of leading post, I should say here, we have our battery switch and breaker panel. The top switch is for our engine battery. It's a simple on and off switch. Up is the off position. Click it over once for on. On the bottom side here, we have our house battery. Again, up is the off position, click it one to the side for on. The yellow section here on this top switch is an emergency parallel. If your engine batteries die, you can click it over one more to the yellow position to allow a parallel between the house and engine batteries so you can jump start your engines. Coming down here, we have uh, three blank accessory uh, breakers and one bilge pump breaker. If your bilge pump stops working on automatic, check that. Typically that's the problem. If you feel something hard in there, simply press it back in to reset it. 
On the bottom here is our 12 volt main breaker. This is the breaker that powers all of the electronics on your dash. If you get on the boat, your engines start, but nothing on your dash works, check that breaker. There's a good chance that's what it is. Coming around from there, we have three group 27 DECA Marine batteries. We have our house battery, which is labeled, our engine starboard, which is also labeled, and our engine port, which is also labeled. We have jumper grounds that run across the back there. If you look over on that side, you'll see the back side of all of our switches and breakers. And up above that a little bit, we have our house breaker, which is currently in the trip position. That little yellow tab there, simply press it back up to reset it, and the engine will be charging. If the engine stops charging for whatever reason, check that breaker, chances are it has tripped. Moving on to our switches. Starting at the top left, this is a middle position off switch. Up is navigation lights, your red, your green, and your white. Down is your anchor light, which is just your white. Next one over from there, we have our cockpit lights, which are our blue lights that run all the way around the boat. There is a good chance at some point one of these will fail. Send us a picture or email it to us and we will get you a new one. Coming over one from there, we have our live weld light. Flip it up. The white light down inside the live weld. Middle position off. Back is our compartment light. On this boat, that's the bilge light. We'll look at that when we get crawl down to the bilge later. Middle position off on that switch. Next one over from there is our spreader lights. You have two spreader lights in the stern of the boat and one on the front of the T-top. Next one over from there are our overhead lights. We have three blue lights, one in the stern, one in the center, and one in the bow. Next, we have a blank accessory switch that is also a middle position off. Coming over from there, we have our live well. Flip that switch, screw in your standpipe you got in your bag, and that's how you use your live well. Next one over from there is our fresh water. Fresh water is located on the starboard stern. It's currently not filled. That's where it goes. That's a middle position off as well. The bottom of that is accessory three. Next one over from there, we have our saltwater wash down, which is on the port stern. This came with a 25 foot white coil hose in your blue bag. That's also a middle position off with accessory four being the down position. Coming over one from there, we have our bilge switch. If the light is on, the bilge is running. This is automatic. There's a float switch in the bilge that will come on, pump water out, and then shut itself back off. If the light's on, that pump's running, so check it. Next one over from there, we have our horn. It's a horn. Coming over one more from there, we have another middle position off switch, which is another blank accessory switch. And last but not least, on the switch panel, we do have a 12 volt lighter, cigarette outlet, whatever you want to call it. No, I don't believe any of that's politically correct anymore. Trim tabs. These are electric trim tabs. Give them a second to respond. A simple touch and wait a sec. The boat will respond two to three seconds after you press the button. Um, don't sit there, press and hold it. You end up laying on your side. Coming straight down from there, we have our key switch and our lanyard. I get this phone call on an almost weekly basis. The engine cranks, there's an alarm and it won't start. You get a check engine light on the dash. That is because your lanyard is not hooked up. 
So clip your lanyard on. The alarm will go away. It's set to clear that and you're good to go. Okay. You have individual keys for each engine. They are keyed the same. Your key number is located right there. The key number for this boat is 457, but that may not match your actual boat. Moving to the right, we have our binnacle. It's a Yamaha dual binnacle control. You have individual trims for each engine right here and a paired trim on the side. Chances are 90% of the time you're gonna use the paired trim. These are probably going to be a little bit off while you're running. They're not gonna match up identically. They have cables that run from here back to the engines. And if they're not perfect, they'll be off a little bit. There's really no way to get them synced up exactly correct, but shouldn't be out more than 10 or 15 degrees. On the bottom here, if you find while you're running, the binnacle is sliding backwards and you have to keep your hand on it. Down here, there are two flat head screws, one there and one there. If you adjust that, clockwise tightens, counterclockwise loosens, that adjusts the tension on the binnacle. So if you find it falling back, tighten that up a little bit, it should hold. This particular boat has an 8610 and a VHF 115. So this is an 8610, press and hold to turn it on. If you find that it's too dim, touch the power button once, and this goes for all Garmin models. Select backlight and you can make it as dark or as bright as you want it. I'm not gonna go too far into the operation of this. Uh, if you have any questions on that, you can call us directly short tutorial this is your home screen now on the right hand side of the screen we have our favorites smart mode which would only apply if you had dual screens and you wanted to program it so that while you were fishing this happened on this screen this happened on that screen with the press of a button uh, one down from there is combos these are all the different layouts you can choose from and by going into menu add a combo you can actually create your own combo exactly the way you want it Coming down one from there, we have our charts. Navigation chart, fishing chart, 3D, and fisheye 3D. Nav chart is what you're gonna to use to actually navigate. It's gonna give you depth shading for your inshore waters. It's going to give you all your buoys, reef sites, wreck sites, everything built right in there. Your fishing chart, you lose all that, but you gain offshore bottom contour information. So when you're inshore using the GPS, navigation chart is the right thing to use. If you're offshore, foot switch to fishing chart because you get a lot more bottom contour info. 3D chart and fisheye 3D are kind of strange, not something I really ever use, but they are there, they are an option. This boat is equipped with a GT51 transducer, which gives us traditional chirp down view and side view. Way chirp works, this is your fish finder. It sends out a barrage of frequencies, gets a signal back, and over time you can learn to differentiate species depending on what you're seeing on the screen. There is no cheat book there, that just takes a lot of time of staring at the screen and remembering what you caught based upon what you marked. Next thing over here is our clear view. This is a scanner. This runs along the bottom and picks up every pretty little detail of what's down there. It's a tremendous structure finder and wreck finder, but it's a terrible fish finder because it is such a narrow band. And coming over one more from there is our side scan. This works exactly the same as the uh, clear view or down scan, just out each side of the boat. The yellow line is your center line. Everything you see over to this side and this side is out the left and right hand side of the boat. If you see something over to the right hand side you wanna put a waypoint on, simply pause the sonar, put your crosshair on the wreck and hit the waypoint button right there. That way next time when you come back to the wreck, you're not coming back to the area of it, you're coming back exactly to the wreck. 
You also have split zoom and split frequency. Split zoom, I don't really use unless we're fishing in over a thousand feet of water. At that point, you would zoom in on the top 200 feet of the water column because you're not raising that fish up from 400 feet. And split frequency, if you wanted to play with different settings and you know run this in a traditional 135 hertz cone and this in a chirp, you could and compare which view you like better. <clears throat> Coming down here, a couple more things. We have our Garmin Active Captain app. This is an application you can get on your phone. You can upload waypoints, you can update your software, all that fun stuff right from your phone, simply by connecting your phone to the Garmin's Wi-Fi network and following these instructions. Coming over one from there, we have vessel information, which is primarily just heading, speed, and position info. Next one over from there is our video input. This would be if you had a night vision camera or something of that nature. Uh, coming over one more from there is the Verb. Um, Garmin has a tremendous product, but a terrible marketing department. No one knows this exists. This is an action camera like a GoPro that you can link to your Garmin. I have some customers that put them on the tips of their outriggers. They can turn them on and off from the screen and catch that bite that way. Uh, again, it's a Verb action camera from Garmin. And last but not least, the Garmin inReach. InReach is a satellite texting device you can pair to your phone or your chart plotter. They run around $350 and they're about 30 bucks a month. Super nice thing, uh, great safety net, if you will, um, in my opinion, well worth the money. When you're done, simply press and hold to shut the system down. <clears throat> Moving over to the right. We have our VHF radio. VHF radio power button is right here. Press and hold to turn it on. Hit clear to accept. Right now we're on uh, our channel 16 default mode. We have our scan. You can go through all your different channels there or press scan there. Hit all and it'll rotate through all of the channels. If anyone talks on any of these channels, it will stop and you can listen to what they're saying. Moving over here, we have our menu with all our channels, our DSC information. This is where you would enter your MMSI number. So select that, use the wheel to roll around to the number that they assigned to you. And that's where you would enter your MMSI number. Right above that, we have our high-low broadcast. So you can change the wattage in which you operate from 1 watt to 25 watts by pressing that. And then behind this little cover we have our distress button. Once you enter your MMSI and press that button, it will broadcast your location information along with any pertinent information you entered when you did the MMSI. So it will broadcast the color of the boat. Uh, health issues of people on board, things of that nature, but you have to actually set up your MSI and enter it in there. And then again, press and hold to power it off. The Cobia 237 is equipped with the JL Audio Media Master 50 and six JL Audio speakers. To select your source, touch the power button. Use the volume wheel to roll through from AM, FM, USB, which is located down here in your glove box. There's also an 8 inch headphone jack in there. Or your auxiliary, which is the 8 inch headphone jack. Bluetooth pairing, which is what most people are probably going to use. Go here, select connect new device, follow the instructions on the screen. Find uh, JLMM50 in your uh, settings, in your system, on your phone, and tear it up. It's pretty straightforward. Going back to FM, use the up-down arrows to seek, volume knob to make it louder or quieter, and then press and hold the power button to shut it down. <clears throat> Coming around the side of the console, a couple things here. First and foremost, we have our pump out and our vent for our toilet. 
this is plumbed. It does not have an overboard discharge. All of your toilet components are right inside of there. Pump it out at a fuel dock. On this back wall, we have our breakers for all of our switches on the dash. If any of the switches on the dash stop working, come in here and check. They are all labeled. Um, so, you know, cabin lights stop working, pop it in. Nav lights stop working, pop it in. Just like the breakers we talked about on the battery switch panel. Behind here, we have access to all of our wiring, our NEMA 2000 network, control cables, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully you never really need to get back in here. As we come out of here, ooh, unclip that, and work our way forward. We have our flip out backrests, simply lift and turn, they will lock in. Lift and turn back, they will lock in again. On the front here, we have a live one, or not live one, sorry, a cooler. Two insulated fish boxes and or storages on both sides. You simply lift and twist to open. These are on friction hinges, so they'll stay right where you leave them. The same goes for our floor storage. Uh, tension hinges, big lip with a gasket. Somewhat dry, nothing on a boat is truly dry storage, but it's somewhat dry. Last but not least, our anchor locker with an anchor hanger. Anchor drops in there, these lock the anchor in place. There is a, a clevis down there you can tie the bitter end off to. This is removable. There are two pins on the bottom here you pull, and this will lift right out. back in place, top pins, locks in. I do recommend removing that for transportation. <clears throat> Fuel fill over here on this side of the boat. Unscrew, fill, it vents through there also. Start slow at the beginning, get the flow going, and then amp up the speed as you move forward. Flip down back seat, flips down, you have the drop in backrest which is inside right now, flip that back up and it folds down. Last but not least, our bilge access, this lifts up, now I'm going to crawl down here. On the back wall here we have our fuel water separators, we have our primer balls. Fuel water separators are a yearly maintenance item or every 100 hours, whichever comes first. Moving back, we have Apollo valves for every few, every through haul, anything that goes through the boat, that or below waterline has an Apollo valve. Straight back in the middle, we have a roll, 1500 gallon per hour, live well, or I'm sorry, bilge pump with its float switch. And then over here, we have our Piranha live well pump also on a through haul. Looking straight over here, we have our fresh water tank. Foul these hoses up. The fresh water fill is located right on the stern of the boat there. Last but not least, in the stern on that uh, port bulkhead, we have our raw water pump right there. Last thing we're going to cover here is outrigger operation. Lift the handle. Twist, pick where you would like to lock back in, and drop the handle back down. Again, lift up, twist, and lock down. In your blue bag, comes with all the outrigger information and rigging kit to rig the outriggers however you would like. It comes with enough for a single halyard system. If you want to do a double halyard, you would have to buy additional clips and rope. Um, congratulations on your new Cobia purchase. Thank you for watching this video and feel free to email or call with any questions. Stay safe out there and enjoy your new boat.